All right, so this is a, um, it, it's, it, you, know, you, know, you know when I signed up to do Kilimanjaro, mm -hmm. one of the things I said was, I am tired of interviewing people who have gone and done it. Um, it's my turn to now get out of my comfort zone, get out of the studio and be the one to be interviewed when I come in. So I would, you know, would, you, would you like to interview I, me? I remember. <laughs> And I said this to the viewers as well, that you had, you approached this with great trepidation. Yes. So whenever we'd have this conversation, you'd say things like, oh, you know, well, even if I don't really, you know, reach the top, you know, it's the thought that counts, A for effort, you yeah, know, et cetera, yeah, yeah. Et cetera which yeah. said to me that you were nervous as a heck. And you were thinking there's a <laughs> great possibility that I'm not going to get there. And so Absolutely. I don't want to set myself up for failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what kind of thought process was going on in your head as you were taking one step at a time? Were you thinking, sheesh, if I don't make this, I'm going to have a lot of explaining to do? Well, you know, I, I, did, I did always, I was very upfront and honest about it from the beginning, and I really did, because it was something that I never, ever believed that I would achieve. I honestly didn't. I'm, not that I don't believe in myself, um, but I know my limitations and I know my capabilities. And climbing a mountain is not part of my capabilities, which I now actually have, um, I, I, I destroyed my image of myself because I did it. But it was tough. It was really, really tough. There was never, um, in the beginning, I must say, it was, it was lovely. You know, those, those, first, those first four days were wonderful. But when it came to summit night, where you're woken up at 10 to 10 in the evening, so from 10 to 10 in the evening until about 7 o'clock the following evening, you are still walking. That's how difficult it is. I mean, it is, you don't stop. The altitude is getting higher and higher. And it was at this time that I started doubting myself. It was this time that I started believing that, you know, I don't think I can do this. But, you know, when they tell you that, that there's so much mental preparation that mm -hmm. goes into Kilimanjaro, this is where the mental prep comes in. Because you can't take, you can take four steps, five steps, and you're out of breath and you have to catch your breath again, and then you have to wait and wait and then come back and then go ahead, carry on. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was that difficult, but you know, it was a matter of pushing yourself and constantly saying, look, you're, you're actually okay. Mm -hmm. You can do this, just keep on pushing. Another step, so another that what step, kept you going. another step. That's it. I mean, it was, there were many things, but I think one of them was, I didn't want to fail. I really didn't. It was such an amazing cause. I'd spoken so much about it. Mm. We'd gotten so involved yeah. in it. And I really didn't want to fail the cause. And I didn't want to fail myself because I, you know, I wanted to believe that I could achieve something yeah. that in my eyes was impossible to achieve. Um, and then the other thing is, I mean, while you're walking, you have images of your children and you're thinking of them and you're oh. thinking, you know, if I could set this example for them, that I can do something that I never thought wow. I could do. Surely this will be a great example for them for the rest of their lives that they can be able to achieve it. I had my husband by my side mm. um, who never left my side the whole time. So, you know, as much as I was feeling terrible and I really was at one point, he actually caught me because oh. I was so dizzy yeah. that I was going to fall off the side of the mountain. It, it got that bad. Yeah. Um, and, and he just said, are you okay? Can you carry on? I'm like, I can. I can do this. I'm not going to sit. Don't because let me sit. That was going to be my next question to you. Was it symbolic in any way? You know, because it's a physical act of climbing the mountain, there's a yeah. mental preparation, but does it signify something greater for you? It does. I mean, it signifies, and I think it's, it's a lesson for everybody, mm. is, is that what you think is your impossible mm. is not your impossible. You are capable of achieving greatness. Everyone is. Mm. Um, even if you think you can't do it, you can. Because... It, it, it's a matter of your mind hmm. overriding your mind because your mind is the most powerful thing that can keep telling you, you can't do this, you can't hmm. do this, but your body actually can. So if you can have that power and that ability to override your mind that is telling you you can't do something and allow your body to do what it knows it can do, my gosh, you can achieve anything. Oh my gosh, I'm about to stand up and start clapping like, <laughs> on some Obama I motivational have, I have become yes, a motivational speaker. There you yes, go. Yes, we can. You see. Back ah, to the trip. Amazing. Back to the actual trip, Leanne. Okay, let's talk about the logistics of having to, to do like crossings every now and again oh. and save sound bars. And even our camera I was man, and yeah. you told me that you wanted to send a personal I tribute do. to him. I have to. And I know we've got to run into news now, mm -hmm. so I've got to wrap this up. But but very quickly, if quickly, I may. Quickly, yeah. I mean, our, our, our cameraman, Gillian Pillay and myself, had we were sharing him. So Gillian, of course, took precedence. She took precedence over news because we really needed to file news. But then the morning live inserts that I did, mm -hmm. he did for us as well. He was editing them. He was 
was filming them. He was up late at night. This guy wasn't eating properly. He wasn't drinking properly. He wasn't taking his medication. He wasn't looking after himself. He was looking after us. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he made it all the way up to Stella Point, and Stella Point is just one, well, it's two hours away from Uhuru. You can see it. But he was unbelievable. And I really believe that he needs, he needs like a, a hero medal or something because what he brought back here, the stuff you were seeing was thanks to him. So Tumelo, I really do. I, 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 I praise you for what you did. And the peak has nothing on what you did. You must always remember that. Really, he did amazingly well. Lovely. We're all jealous and incredibly proud of you. Let's leave it there at least for now. Hey, we're running into news We time. are. Okay. Let's quickly break the news. <laughs> and also, we promised you that interview with Jimmy Cook. That's coming up in the news as he pays tribute to his friend and late colleague, Clive Rice. Stay tuned.